All right, cool. So let's let's set the table a little bit, right? Let's let's talk about controversy. So every year, I feel like there's like some kind of big hype thing that's happening in the tech world. In 2022, that was crypto and NFTs. This year, I think it's going to be something along the lines of augmented reality with the release of the uh, Apple Vision Pro. Um, but in 2023, Jason already kind of touched on it. It was AI, right? ChatGPT exploded for better or for worse. It seemed like every single company was trying to like force AI into their product messaging, integrating with OpenAI and Anthropic, doing something with AI. Okay, so. Um, one thing that I've noticed with these like hype cycles is that they gradually go from like a really interesting use case in the very beginning, right? Something like very tangible, cool to like almost like a caricature of itself by the end of the year. And so case in point, right? Where when everyone was getting really into crypto, it was all about Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then, uh, when you look into the tech, you know, there's something really compelling there, really interesting use cases on their own. And then uh, more importantly, they allow for others to like build on top of that technology, right? And so with crypto, you know, by the end of the hype cycle, um, you had like, things like Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Pepe, and like, I'm not kidding you, there's another coin literally called Bonk. <laughs> like, when I was researching this, I was, I was like, what is Bonk? Okay, so in either case, caricature of like what, you know, crypto is all about, right? Um, with augmented reality, we're starting to see like some mock-ups and ideas of like just different ways that we can use the technology. So right now, a lot of the ideas that are coming out are really compelling, right? We're still like kind of early in this hype cycle. I don't know if you saw, there was like one where um, people were supposed to like have the Vision Pro on and they're like vacuuming and like the augmented reality was showing like points that you would like accrue for like getting the entire rug. Um, oh so God. that was like pretty cool. Um, but in either case, again, like I, I bet we're going to get more ridiculous kind of examples by the end of the year, like once nearing kind of the end of the hype cycle, some that maybe aren't very helpful. And this is what happened with AI, which is where I'm going with this. So we started 2023, everyone was gravitating towards chat GPT. And then by the end of the year, a company called Humane made waves by announcing a product called the AI pin. And just, just for the record, it's AI capital A lowercase I. Okay, so very, very specific there. But in either case, uh, this is where the controversy comes in, right? Uh, You know, because, uh, oh, and also, let me just, you know, for clarity, there's different types of controversy that I think are important to mention here, right? There's um, the bad kind of controversy, which, you know, might spark ethical questions and might have political implications, safety concerns, all those types of things. I personally, like, steer clear of any of those launches that spark that kind of controversy. But then there's the flip side, which you could argue is good controversy that like benefits from what people are talking about, like how they're talking about the launch, how frequently they're talking about the launch. Um, Maybe your launch was really unique. Maybe it was like memeable uh, or just like really expresses your idea and just so happens to capture the zeitgeist in a specific point in time. So I think all of those things considered, that's how I think Humane really nailed their AI pin. It's like the better side of controversy controversy in a good way okay so let's talk about the launch right so like why was it controversial what did they do okay so i'm going to share my so i learned about the launch i'm scrolling through twitter late last year and all of a sudden i'm seeing this video getting reposted across my feed and it's just this classic tech launch video that looks like, you know, if you turn it on, it's like this guy, this lady, they're both wearing like all black, all white tech in the background, very much inspired by like Steve Jobs, Apple, all that kind of stuff. It's a 10 minute video announcing this product. And like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to sit there and watch that. I don't have the time. I'm not going to do it. And so, uh, but I see a lot of people have commentary about it. And so I do like the classic, like armchair expert type of uh, thing. And I just read what other people are saying about this thing. I don't really form any opinions of my own. I'm just like reading what other people are saying. And from what I can gather, the sentiment is pretty mixed. You know, it's a a lot of people's opinions. There's a there's a lot of people talking about the fact that it's very like use case um, or excuse me, like lots of features, lots of talk about tech, but not really much about like its actual purpose. Okay, which or value. So from like a product marketing perspective, it's like, eh. I don't really know like how interesting that is, but you know, 
I still haven't watched the 10 minute video. I'm still seeing it getting reposted constantly until finally like a week later. And I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going to finally try to find this video and I'm going to watch it. So it's stuck with me for over a week. I finally sit down and watch it. And yeah, like once I finally sit down and watch it, I can see exactly what everyone's talking about. It's not really what you would consider like uh, something that a lot of product marketers would probably enjoy watching. It's just doesn't, it's not like nailing all the best practices of a typical product launch, lots of feature talk, all that kind of stuff. But I don't want to talk through like really like whether I think this product launch video was like high quality or if it passed like all of the like typical PMM tropes that like we're always trying to like emphasize in product launch assets. What I think is important is that I came back a week later after reading all about it because I was interested in it. I sat down and I watched a 10 minute video. And then because I've continued to be interested in just the topic of, hey, will this work? Does this resonate with people? I would say about once a month over the past few months, I just Google AI pin to see like what's happened. Like just I, not because I'm trying to buy it, but because I'm like, hey, like that was a thing that happened. Like, are they shipping it? What are people's reactions to it? And I think that that's that says a lot about the fact that it was fairly controversial and that like it's stuck in your head and it forced you to continue thinking about like, hey, is this thing working? How is it working? What are what are people's reactions to it? And so that's taken up a lot of headspace for me personally. And, you know, obviously a ton of a ton of other people without even shipping the product. It like they just now started shipping the product, but I've continued to like look into it more and more. And so that's why I think it, you know, nails that most controversial launch piece for me personally. Whew, gotta take a deep um, breath. I gotta yeah. whew, I'm starting to sweaty. Is it hot in I, here? I remember that too. I, I was like on the I was with you on that armchair expert sort of thing where where yeah. I'm like Put on your product marketer hat, and you're like, "Oh, it's so feature focused and things like that." And then, and then the uh, that company Rabbit released the R1, yeah. or mm-hmm. like announced that they were about to launch the R1, and and that sold out in like like a day or something, right? Like all their pre orders. And I've been thinking a lot about it lately. And you talked about the hype cycle, and it's what I almost feel like at a those things are so early, right? Like these these products that are AI products and they're like personal devices for AI specifically. And I think that, I don't know, one take that I have around it is that when it's that early and you're only talking to early adopters, I do feel like there's a large, like the majority of them just care about nerding out on the features. I agree. Like there is something about them just being like, tell me about everything. (laughs) I want to know how it works. I want to know. They're just like so interested in and it's almost like this, like, oh, you wouldn't get it. You don't understand this. Like, I want to understand all these yeah. things. Like, I want to know the details of this, this pin and how it works. So there's something about it where it's like, you're not in on this. I'm in on this. I know, how, I know, all, I know how to figure out all the use cases for this. Don't just tell me how it mm-hmm. works. Tell me all the features. I don't know. I think there's something to that. I think you're right. And I think, I think well, like the point is there's no one size fits all for product launches. We talk about this a lot. And like we talk about in our course as well, uh, at the beginning of the launch, you need to determine who is this launch for. And it's not who is the product mm. for, right? Because the product could be for multiple different customer segments over a period of time. But who was this launch for? I think you're right, Jason, in calling out that this was super fans, the early adopters, uh, yeah. and they probably want completely different information than say a broader more generally available launch like i like this came across my radar i have less than zero interest in this i still don't even understand what it is to be honest but i will say there is there is something about the hype where every now and then andy whenever i do see it pop up like whether it's an article on linkedin or or whatever it might be i'm like what was that again so like it is in my mind percolating somewhere but I think it's because the launch wasn't for me, you know, and I'm yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. It's a good point. I saw them on, I saw them, they were like guests on, maybe it was like a CNN kind of news show about that. that anyways, they got to talk about their product and yeah, them explaining it to someone, to like a panel of three people who were like news anchors on CNN, they, they just didn't, you know, like, they, huh? they, they just didn't get it. Yeah. And it was a clear, it was a clear comparison of like who they're targeting right now versus someone who is like what is this it's like what is the internet 
Right. Like they're like, I don't get it. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah, I think the technology is fascinating. Obviously it's like, you know, it's a tiny little thing. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, so this isn't like to like this, the, the product or anything like that, all that at all. What I think made this so controversial was like that perfect storm of like, yeah, they were speaking to that audience that you're talking about, uh, like very, very small group. That's like really interested in this tech. It just so happened to also get picked up by the, the large masses of, you know, other people who are like kind of into AI or like have started thinking about it and they saw it and they're like, oh, my God, like, what is this? And just kind of like felt like it was the right place at the wrong time or r- wrong place, right time. I don't know. One of those things are like a little off in that, like they had a story, they had a cool launch, but it also got picked up by a lot of people that weren't really their audience. And so it got swooped up and they got open up for a bunch of uh a bunch of criticism i don't know if they really deserved but i think over time it probably would will be seen as a win for them because now anytime i see uh, like an ai device i automatically think of the ai pin i like compared against them as like oh i wonder if that's going to be as interesting as that one i think that's a good argument it's like they became misunderstood not because they did anything wrong like actually their marketing and launch campaign was well tailored to the target audience they were going after but because other people were trying to interpret what they were saying they got misunderstood and then that became the controversy it's completely outside of Mm, their control it is i think that's a good example too of, of what we talked about in the beginning with like good publicity bad publicity i think that's all good yeah like they totally. don't care at this point what what like we yeah, think they about don't. the product. <laughs> they don't at all. Yeah, that's true. 